thank you so much for this nice introduction. Yes, indeed, the title is uh, quite long, but I hope that the presentation will be interesting. It is uh, related to uh, yesterday's session uh, that was in the morning conducted by Professor Agnieszka Zomajska, and today I'm going to present another problem that is usually uh, in front of engineers when dealing with different types of signals and uh, data analysis. And I'm going to introduce a, a testing procedure for uh, final variance for signals in uh, time and uh, their time frequency representations with special focus on application to vibration signals. So usually real data displays uh, dis displays non Gaussian behavior and the worst case scenario is when we do not have a finite uh, set of moments, so the variance does not exist. In this case, we cannot use uh, multiple classical uh, statistical methods such as, for example, autocovariance or autocorrelation to measure dependence within the data. And moreover, identifying cavitate behavior may be difficult when we do not know the distribution of the sample. And we proposed uh, statistical tests based on empirical cumulative given moment and its parametrization for detecting, uh, for detecting uh, infinite variance behavior. So at first I will introduce the statistics. So when we have an independent random observations, this statistic is simply defined as the cumulative sum of uh, even moments, uh, of, uh, yes, of, the, of the samples uh, taken to the even power. And when the, uh, this even moment exists, the, the statistic converges to a constant number. Meanwhile, uh, for, in, uh, for when this moment is infinite, the, uh, the statistic diverges. So we also would like to introduce the um, parameterization of the statistics based on this uh, based on this property. So we have a constant for when the finite moment exists. And then here I will present you some trajectories of the statistics. So in the top row, we can see uh, finite variance uh, distributions. These are uh, Gaussian distributions, or make sure of Gaussian distributions. And we see that the statistics uh, tend to a constant. Meanwhile, for infinite variance distribution, we observe this chaotic jumps, this chaotic behavior, and divergence to infinity. So how we decided to parameterize the statistic? We used exactly this property that the, that usually observe those uh, jumps. And based on those jumps, maybe I will go back there. So based on those jumps, we are segmenting the statistics uh, into, we are uh, actually segmenting the trajectory of the statistics. And then we are fitting the slope of those uh, of those segments. So we select the last log segment and we are uh, selecting the linear regression here. So we obtain the slope of this last segment. And we denote this statistic, this parametrization as AM. And this is a simple flowchart presenting how to obtain this parametrization. And so right now I'm going to present the results of those statistics for different uh, for two different distributions. The first distribution is a uh, stable distribution that can be parameterized by four parameters. The first is alpha uh, stability parameter responsible for the habitat behavior. Next is the scale. Also, there's a shift and skewness parameter. And for uh, this is nice distribution because we can compare the behavior in infinite variance, variance case and uh, infinite variance case because for when alpha is equal to two, the stable distribution reduces to the Gaussian case. So also because we apply our uh, analysis to some real signals that are usually centered and not skewed, we are only considering a scale parameter and alpha parameter. So we are considering a symmetric alpha stable distribution. And those are the, the results of our statistics. In the first row, we can see the results of the parameter, parameterization. So these are the slopes. And in the bottom, we can see the results of the um, statistic, uh, empirical, empirical cumulative even moment statistics. So we can see that the more that we diverge from the Gaussian distribution, so the, the alpha index is lower, we can see that the statistics are uh, growing in, uh, in 
this case. So there is clearly a difference um, for very impulsive signals and for and signals of the variances in it. And also another distribution that we uh, used in this uh, work is student's distribution. And it is defined through a uh, probability density function. So we have, and this is parametrized by the numbers of degrees of freedom. So when the numbers of degrees of freedom are in the range from zero to two, we have infinite variance. Meanwhile, when the uh, numbers of degrees uh, of freedom tends to infinity, the students to, dis to distribution tends to Gaussian distribution. And in here, we present the results of the statistics exactly like in the previous example they were obtained in Monte Carlo simulations. So the first represents the slopes for different value of n, and the second represents the empirical inductive minimum statistics. And we can see that when also when the number of degrees of freedom is decreasing, so we are, uh, let's say, going away from this Gaussian distribution and more impulses occurs within the, within the uh, random sample, we can see that the statistics also takes, uh, let's say, larger variance and also those uh, intervals, the ranges are also a larger similarly as it serves for stable uh, distribution. So now uh, what is our proposed testing procedure? Um, and it is worth noting that we do not know the uh, exact formula or exact distributions of the statistics. So uh, in our test, we decided to uh, calculate those uh, calculate those values empirically and create uh, acceptance regions based for based on those um, based on those simulations, and we can modify the significance level. So the the number of the uh, values that will be taken into consideration when we will create this uh, when we will create this range. So at first, when we have our input sample, we normalize it. It is worth noting that we normalize it using um, techniques that are appropriate for um, infinite variance signals. For example, we uh, we do not use mean, we use median, and we use uh, standard, we use conditional moments, conditional standard deviation. So then, for the sample, we calculate um, we calculate the respective statistics, whatever uh, of our liking, and then again. In this example, as I explained, we have to simulate the trajectories to be able to create the acceptance region for our test. So if our uh, respective statistic falls within this calculated range, we uh, we do not reject uh, the null hypothesis, which is that the sample comes from the distribution that has final variance. And otherwise, we assume that the variance of the uh, input sample of the, of the distribution of the input sample is infinite. And these are the results presenting the power of the test for uh, alpha stable distribution. So we can see that uh, the power of the test is uh, decreasing with uh, when we are decreasing, when we are increasing the alpha, so when we are going closer to a Gaussian distribution. And we can see that uh, the statistics uh, A1 and C1 favor not rejecting the uh, the null hypothesis, and the other the, the other tests favor uh, rejecting the uh, null hypothesis. And those results were obtained for one thousand Monte Carlo simulations. And in here we have results for different again for different um, sample sizes. Uh, this time for students distribution. Uh, so we can see that the power also decreases with, um, the power of the set test also decreases when we are increasing the number of the of freedom. Uh, however, um, again, we, we have this here uh, quite uh, higher values than um, basically for, from six to 15, and actually from three to 15, we have uh, finite variance distribution. However, the test sometimes um, falsely uh, reject the hypothesis in those cases. So the students' the distribution this test work, works a little worse than in case of simple distributions. So now uh, we wanted also to validate this approach for real signals and for uh, for real vibration signals because this is also the part of the work that is currently uh, conducted in our university. 
as cooperation with uh, mining, geology, and geoengineering uh, faculty. And these are signals coming from healthy, uh, healthy mining machines. The first signal comes from uh, rolling bearings in healthy state, so we do not expect here any type of auto dependencies. And the second signal comes from healthy uh, crushing machine made for crushing uh, uh, hard rock materials. So this is the time representation, and this is time frequency spectrogram rep representation that Professor Lomesta mentioned yesterday. So um, we have prepared, we have performed some um, uh, preprocessing, data preprocessing, because. In this signal, although we have a healthy machine, we can see that there are some dependencies uh, and that they are reflected in this region of our uh, spec program. They are connected also. We can see that there is focus of power in this area also for signal two. So we wanted to extract those potentially um, dependent uh, parts of the signal. And this is what we obtain with a simple uh, filtering. So we have filtered from the two kilohertz to 10 kilohertz to signal one, and we have filtered uh, from one to 12.5 kilohertz to signal two. And this is the only, uh, uh, when we analyze this in time frequency uh, domain, we analyze this rows from this matrix only from this range. So we omitted this in our analysis. Uh, okay. And when uh, coming to the analysis in time domain, we segmented the signals into uh, seconds. So for signal uh, signal two, we had uh, 101 seconds, and for signal uh, one, we had only two seconds. So these are the results of our test for signal one because there were only two seconds. We classify and both of those seconds by all of the tests were classified as. Um, uh, finite, they were classified as finite variants. Moreover, we wanted to compare the empirical uh, tails of our distribution and theoretical uh, Gaussian distribution. And we also we did a Komogorov Smirnov test to see if this distribution is indeed uh, Gaussian. And in time representation, we obtained that this is a Gaussian distribution. This is comparison of the tails, empirical and uh, theoretical. And in time frequency domain, uh, let me explain what we, here, what we have here on the y-axis. So basically, zero represents uh, accept, uh, not rejecting the uh, null hypothesis, and one represents rejecting the null hypothesis. So we can see that also in time frequency representations for signal one, basically all of the tests uh, uh, classified the signal as coming from final variance distribution. And the results for signal uh, two. In the uh, in the top panel, we see results obtained for a time uh, time domain, and in the bottom panel, we can see results obtained for uh, time frequency uh, time frequency domain for for spectrogram representation. And the logic is here is the same. We have zero for uh, not rejecting the null hypothesis and one for rejecting it. And we can see that also in most cases, signal two, both in time and time frequency domain, is classified as infinite variance signal. So to sum up, we uh, in this work, we proposed a new parametrization of the empirical cumulative early moment statistic. We uh, also introduced the test based on uh, proposed statistics, based on statistics on the parametrization and empirical cumulative given moment. And we validated our methods both for um, for simulation case and for uh, real data analysis. And we need to emphasize that the proposed methods needs further de development because we do not know the theoretical formula of those statistics and we do not, not we cannot Mm, use this test for dependent uh, observations. So again, uh, for to propose something that will be even more uh, robust in this case, we, we would have to extend this methodology or maybe introduce another statistics for this uh, such a problems. And these are the references for the work. And this also, as I previously mentioned, this is the cooperation we are currently working also on the project on our university 
and we basically are doing the methods of processing and detection of uh, of uh, some kind of faults. And thank you for your attention.